Three really creepy true arcade horror stories by Mr. Nightmare. What's good? How your day going? Morning, evening, night, whenever you're watching this video. I'm not about to do a long intro. I'm not about to talk your ears off. I'm definitely interested to see what's going on in this video, though. The reason why? Because you know Uncle Charles always got a story for everything, man. But beep, at the end of the video, I want to share. Got an or arcade horror story my damn self. It involves Mortal Kombat 3 to be exact. But yeah, you may not care about that. Let's go ahead and see what's going on, dog. You want to check out see, see that, that, that the original video? Link will be in the description below, but let's go. <laughs> This is one of those stories from my childhood that still just gives me the chills thinking back to it even today. It was October, and my family was on vacation to some family resort in Catskill, New York. It was kind of in the middle of nowhere, but there were a decent amount of other families at the resort. There were a lot of kids. I remember the resort being surrounded by forest in all directions, but the actual resort grounds were fairly large. I was eight years old. I was an awkward, shy kid for most of my childhood. I would follow the lead of my older brothers usually whenever in social settings. I'm the third child of four. I have three brothers. During this vacation, my older brothers Eric and Josh were mostly hanging out amongst themselves since they're closer in age than I am with them. My little brother Craig was only four, so he was constantly with my parents. When we weren't all together doing resort activities, everyone for the most part split up. My dad gave all of us money to play games at the arcade inside the activity hall building. My parents assumed I was with my older brothers at one point, but I was actually alone just exploring the resort grounds. I walked around the big cement pathway that looped around the entire resort. I passed by some families playing bocce ball, croquet, and other sports. Yo, this story I was partially familiar, looking for my brothers or just anything I could do by myself. I started exploring the inside of the activity hall building and I found the arcade my dad was telling us about. It was actually a pretty impressively sized arcade. It had a bunch of pinball machines and all the standard classic arcade machines. At the time, most of the games were just a quarter to play. Turtles. So I looked around the room. Miss Pac-Man, my bad, let me go back. Every city I live in, kid you not, I go to the arcade and I and, and I get it. The high score in Miss Pac-Man, the fast one, not that little BS slow ish You're not gonna beat me ever, 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 ever. Arcade. I'm so it had a bunch of pinball machines and all the standard classic arcade machines. At the time, most of the games were just a quarter to play. So I looked around the room for a game I wanted to play, and I noticed in one corner of the room the store with this really fogged up looking square glass window in the middle. It was like a special kind of glass that was hard to see through. I thought I could see something through the glass, so I walked a little closer to the door to look through it better. And I saw this humanoid figure standing there, staring through the window. I looked at it for like 15 seconds and it wouldn't move. I could barely see the face of it through the weird glass, but it kind of looked like a Halloween prop. It was Halloween season after all, and so that's what I assumed it was. A decoration meant to scare the kids. I walked away to find a game and ended up playing the Simpsons arcade game. The arcade machine was in the line of sight of that door though, and yeah, I couldn't Simpsons help but keep fire. looking over to it every few seconds still seeing that blurred image of the figure on the other side of the door. If it was a decoration, it was doing its job and creeping me out. After I lost the game, I just had to go back over to the door and look through the glass again, this time putting my face- That Simpson game was hard AF too. Well, it, it got hard AF the more you progressed to it. Game. I just had to go back over to the door and look through the glass again, this time putting my face basically right up to the glass. I saw the blurred face of the figure standing there, it was a man for sure. The neutral expression on the face suddenly changed to a smile, and I gasped in horror. It was a real person. I ran halfway out of the arcade, then stopped and turned around. The blurred figure on the other side of the door was gone. I slowly walked back to the door and opened it. I was brought into this dark hallway. It just had this liminal, unexplainable feeling inside of it, and I was creeped out. I didn't see anyone in there. But it got so dark mere feet away from the door that for all I knew, there could have been someone hiding further down the hall. I went back through the arcade to where I came in from and went straight back to our room and stayed there till my parents returned. I told them about it and I'm sure they found it odd. That night when we all had dinner together in the dining hall, something disturbing happened. I noticed a man sitting alone at one of the nearby tables. 
He was facing me and looking at me. He had a plate of food in front of him, but I don't remember seeing him eating. When he saw me look back at him, he smiled. Immediately, I thought back to the man I saw on the other side of the door. Even through that blurry glass, I felt like the face and smile matched. I quietly told my parents about the man, scared, and they looked back at the man, which caused him to stop looking over. My dad <laughs> told me to just not look in that man's direction. Pretty soon, the man got up and left, and he took one last look at me before he did. I tried my best to look away and pretend not to notice. That was the last time I saw that man on our trip. I look back on it and feel like he was most likely a predator. The hey, way he, he just was. stood there, still as a statue, watching me for so long. And then that creepy smile. If I'm right, I hope no children ever fell victim to him. If I'm right, I hope no children ever fell victim to him. At first, I thought he was talking about some ghost-ish, but it's like, man, get this weirdo out of here. Story to another, man. I once dealt with a very bad stalker situation as a male when I was 23. I had met this girl, Alyssa, who was 19. I actually slid in her DMs on Instagram, and it went from there. I was surprised she answered me because she had a lot of followers. We hung out only a few times, but she seemed extremely clingy very quickly, which was a major turnoff for me. I started hanging out with other girls, and as I would get new followers, Alyssa actually texted me angrily about it, as if we were dating. She got mad at me for allegedly ignoring her texts, yet my follower count was going up from new girls. It was pretty comical at first, I didn't really let it bother me. I started talking to this girl, Meg. As our second date, we decided Dave to go Buster. to Dave and Buster's. We drank a little before mm -hmm. we went, so when we got there, we already kind of had a buzz going. We were playing the Basketball Connect 4 game. That's when my phone kept going off in my pocket. After the timer on the game ended, I checked my phone, and I got three texts from a random number and a picture. The picture was of Meg and I in front of the basketball game. The text said, No way, I'm at Dave and Buster's too. When I went to text back, Hey, y'all gonna think I'm tripping out, dog. <laughs> oh, I think I go. <laughs> Oh, God, y'all gonna really think I'm tripping out. Chill out, dog. Chill out. For real, 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 for real. I don't look. I'm not seeking attention. I'm not trying to do no shit like trying to get no clout views and this shit. I'm definitely saying, stop playing with me, dog. Yo, man. Remember when I was like that first one? I was like, man, damn, this sounds so familiar. I know I had that dream before. I kid you not, I had this dream before too, John. And David Foster's too. <laughs> I'm tripping. I'm having the biggest deja vu moment. Deja vu is nothing that's crazy. It's not a sign of going crazy. Stop looking at me like that, dog. Deja vu happened to us all. That's all that is. Yeah, I ain't dreaming about this shit. That's deja vu, man. <laughs> this shit tripping me out. I think I think we did watch that first video though. I really do think we watched or we did somewhere. You can't tell me we did. <laughs> Hold up, Jack. I had to open my window real quick. Get some air up in this mug. It's a crazy video. Let me go back. All right, I'm tripping. I'm, let's let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go. The picture. The picture was of Meg and I in front of the basketball. Game. If he get up and go to the bathroom, or if she get up and go to the bathroom, that's all I'm gonna say. I don't remember anything else. That's all. Game. I hope it don't happen. The though. text said, no way, I'm at Dave and Buster's too. When I went to text back, I saw the text didn't come from another iPhone, so it most likely meant it was sent from some kind Droid. of burner number app. Uh oh. I looked in the direction from where the picture was taken. My first assumption was that it was going to be Alyssa, but she wasn't there. It was just a few other groups of people playing different games. I replied, who is this? But there was no response. I showed Meg the text and picture and she agreed it had to be a friend messing with me. We went across the place to a different game, and it happened again, a few minutes into playing this new game. I got a picture texted to me with both of our backs turned to the person taking the picture, and they were maybe like 50 feet away from us when it was taken. <laughs> it looked blurry though, like it was zoomed in. This time they sent a text saying, my favorite game, can you beat my high score, LOL. 
I told Hell Ned yeah. to wait there as I walked to the area where the picture was taken from. I looked all around the immediate area, expecting to see Alyssa or honestly anyone I knew, but it was just a bunch of strangers. Some random lone guy playing some ticket jackpot game, this group of teenagers playing skee-ball, it was a normal scene. I replied to the text again asking who is this? Then I texted a few of my close friends a screenshot of the pictures, of course yeah, asking if it were any of them first. Up. I believed them when they said it wasn't. It could have been anyone, but I did not see Alyssa in there. The person responded to my text, who do you think it is? I said maybe we should go to Meg, and she agreed. We left the building and went to my car. I got a text from the number saying, why do you leave? I didn't respond. We went to a nearby bar to continue our date, and after that, Meg actually came home with me. Meg and I were in my room when I got a text again. It was from the same number, another text and picture. The text said, what a lovely house, come outside, and the picture was of my house. Now this was a direct Damn, threat, this good. was not a joke anymore. I wasn't sure if whoever it was was still outside my house or not, until I heard a window break from downstairs. I grabbed my Glock 19 from my nightstand and charged there downstairs and out the front door. I saw a big guy in front of the house with a big metal baseball bat in his hand. He was acting tough until he saw my gun, so he and he saw dropped that the bat and put his pole. hands up. I yelled to Meg inside to call 911 as I had my gun pointed at the man. I recognized him to be one of the lone men at Dave & Buster's playing some ticket jackpot game, which now that I think about it, he was probably just pretending to be playing. I asked him who he was and why he was following me. He immediately said that he was Alyssa's brother and that basically he was trying to stick up for his sister. Crashing I yelled at him that there was nothing to stick up for. All I did was stop answering her. Damn, he bro. claimed that Alyssa told him that I hit her, which I screamed at him that was complete bullshit. A shitty person. Legit don't know how this dude could have responded to your, your brother. What kind of shit could have got your brother into? Like, But don't give a fuck. I never understood the type, the type of people who would do that. Legit be completely off, wrong in the situation. But no, let me go get my family, tell them you did X, Y, Z. And like, yeah, he did this X, Y, Z. My nigga, like, you, you don't get it. Like, families did not stop getting crazy when yours was crazy. <laughs> Basically, all I'm saying is, thank goodness I was wrong, for one. But, um, yeah, you really have to not give AF about that person to legit just send him on a, on a dummy mission like that. Just crash out, whatever. Man, and, and another thing, not gonna lie to you, Hey, he got he got old girl back though, whatever, which was not cool as shit with that going on. And especially what I was saying, like, okay, so she saw this too though, right? If we out hanging out on, on a date, hanging out, someone sending you random pictures of us hanging out, we don't know who it is. Ain't no way in hell I'm going back to that crib. Hell no. Nah. <laughs> it is late, dog. I Think need some coffee. It. Let me go back. He's probably just pretending to be I don't playing. Drink coffee. I asked him who he was and why he was following me. He immediately said that he was Alyssa's brother and that basically he was trying to stick up for his sister. I yelled at him that there was nothing to stick up for. All I did was stop answering her. He claimed that Alyssa told him that I hit her, which I screamed at him that was complete bullshit. I only hung out with her a few times and lost interest. I even went as far as to call them both batshit crazy, and he Hell responded yeah. saying, please don't call the cops. But Meg did, and when they showed up, it was an easy arrest for the police. I also sent a video of the ordeal to Alyssa, which was the sweetest form of a revenge imaginable. He stayed there She didn't what? even reply to it, but I know she saw it. I'm, I'm glad he did, but if someone scared the police, like, no, no, don't do that, don't do that, I would think I'm a dip. Like, I'm just going to get up out of here, dog. I don't know. The arrest for the police. I also sent a video of the ordeal to Alyssa, which was the sweetest form of a revenge imaginable. She didn't even reply to it, but I know she saw it. Needless to say, Alyssa's psychotic brother paid for the window and neither of them have dared to bother me again. Maybe he actually had a good heart. Maybe she really did just finesse the hell out of him. Yeah, no, homie, he ain't really that type of man. Yeah, he just need to go to jail, homie. <laughs> My bad, Charleston White was coming out. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's not smoking. <laughs> <laughs> stop, dog. Stop playing. All right, ads over. Stop playing. Let me go back. Stop playing so much. Come on, be for real. Be for real, dog. When 
When I was a young kid, arcades were a lot more mainstream in society. Before everyone had smartphones and crazy advanced video games at home, going to the arcade was one of the most fun things you could do as a child. There was this arcade right by my school that my friends and I would often go to Capcom. after school or on the weekends. One day I went there with my friend Connor right after school. It was kind of quiet there today because it was a stormy day and most kids probably just ran home or got picked up by their parents. So besides a few other kids, we had the place to ourselves. The usual age range of the people there was like 10 to upper teens. Connor and I were playing Street Fighter together when this older guy started watching us play. Looking back now, I'd say he was around 35, which to us when we were 10 seemed was super old. old. AF. Connor and I looked at each other and smirked because we both noticed it and it was kind of awkward. Boy, time a bitch. The man started Let commenting on the game. Boy, when reality kick you in your mother teeth hold on let me go back real quick mm -hmm. we have right, the place no more, to no ourselves back, no the usual age range of the people there was like 10 to upper teens connor and i were playing street fighter together when this older guy started watching us play looking back now i'd say he was around 35 which to us when we were 10 seemed super old connor and i looked at each other and smirked because we both noticed it and it was kind of awkward the man started commenting on the gameplay like cheering us on and having remarks on basically any hit we landed <laughs> on each weird, other. Dog. At first, we laughed, I guess to be polite, thinking he was trying to be funny. Yep. But at a certain point, it just got weird. Like he didn't know when to stop and leave. He watched us play the entire match. And had he not been there, we would have played another. But we decided to migrate to something else just to try to get away from him. As we went over to the air hockey tables, the guy was following us and started talking to us. He introduced himself, but I don't remember the name he gave. He offered to pay for our game of air hockey. We were 10 and we viewed our quarters as gold, so we accepted the guy's offer. Even at 10, we could tell he gave off some kind of antisocial tendencies. He didn't seem completely normal. Of course, he watched our game of air hockey too and kept commenting on the game as if he were a professional commentator for some sporting event. But it went from annoying oh, to downright creepy when he started God. making physical contact. It started when I scored a point on Connor and the guy like congratulated me and put his hand on my shoulder. The hand stayed there for a few seconds actually. Outside I was smiling, but inside I wanted to tell him to get lost. I saw it in Connor's face too. Anytime one of us scored, he would go over to us and pat us on the back or shake our shoulders. The guy was incredibly freaking weird. Because of it, we decided to cut the arcade trip short. We told the guy we were going to head home. He then replied saying we'd be crazy to walk in the rain and offered us a ride home. We didn't have cell phones back then and as mm -hmm. kids we were a lot more independent. So well, we fully well planned to run home in the rain. We thanked him but said we live close so we'll be alright. That was our mistake, not lying and saying we had a ride. We left outside into the rain and started to run towards my house. Connor was going to come over to hang out. As we were running home, a red car started creeping up from behind us, in a matter that they weren't even trying to hide the fact that they were following us. We looked back at it and could see the man from the arcade behind the wheel. He pulled closer and yelled out his window, telling us to get in. We ignored him and he persisted, saying we're getting soaked, get in the car. I yelled back, we're good, and we continued to run. We were getting closer to my house. The man suddenly gave the car some gas and sped ahead of us, then pulled over next to the curb where we were about to pass. Connor and I stopped, and I said cross the street. We did, to avoid the man possibly jumping out of his car to grab us. This ordeal made us run even faster to my house. My house was now in sight, and the red car was still behind us. We made it to my front porch, and I rang the bell at least ten times until my mom answered the door. We pointed to the red car but it was already all the way down the street. We told her about the man who was following us from the arcade, and she was mad that we let him right back to the house instead of ringing one of the neighbor's doorbells. And she was right to say that, because the next day when I was leaving to walk to school, I saw that red car parked a few houses down on the opposite side of the street right away. I went inside to tell my parents, and while my mom called the police, my dad stepped outside and started angrily walking over to the car. As my dad was halfway towards the car, 
It turns oh, out I'm, I'm loving the responses in this one, though. I'm telling you that much, though. Let me go back, man. This, these are the ones that actually sound like sounding actual real. Like, hell no. Because I was thinking, I was like, at first, I was a little upset that they did run home. Like, why didn't you do that? Out smart or whatever, but not nah, at that age. No, come on home. Let your parents deal with that. F that because because strangers would do other shit. Like because I'm not gonna lie, but I just see some random kids knocking at my door. I probably ain't gonna open the door. Like I call police if y'all wanna call police, but I don't know what's going on. Like about opening my fucker. So you don't know if something like that happens. So yeah, come come home. A especially you almost there. You get there, nigga. Come home. I'm called the police. My dad stepped outside and started angrily walking over to the car. As my dad was halfway towards the car turned on and sped down the street to never be seen by us again. I had to speak to the police a little bit to describe the man and what he did at the arcade during the walk home and afterwards. Because I was hoping they would have went to one of the uh, employees while they was in the arcade, dog. And what he did at the arcade during the walk home and afterwards. Sadly, my dad did not catch the license plate, but they did have the information on what kind of car it was. Still, I don't think they ever found that guy. He was clearly sick in the head. We were not allowed back at that arcade by our parents, and the arcade owner was alerted of that man. Mm. Crazy. That story was true for me. Y'all right there, dog.